I will talk about the disruption of protein-protein interaction as an approach to new drug discovery. Uh, as we all know, protein-protein interactions are involved in most, if not all, biological processes as they allow the formation of macromolecular structures and enzymatic complexes, and therefore they are intrinsic to virtually every cellular process. Some protein-protein interactions have also been proposed as uh, are also responsible for pathogenetic processes, such as virus infection and uh, replication, and uh, also tumor formation. Indeed, uh, a large number of protein-protein interactions, this is just a short list, not exhaustive, of some interaction between viral proteins or between viral proteins and cellular factors, have been proposed as potential target for therapeutic intervention, and not only in virologists, but in many other fields. Protein-protein interaction uh, have attracted attention at, uh, as a potential target for a number of reasons. First of all, they are usually essential and specific. Often, even though not always, they involve a few or even single residues, meaning that uh, such an interaction could be disrupted, dissociated also by a small molecule. And uh, there is uh, some evidence, some increasing evidence, that the mutants are resistant to inhibitors of protein-protein interactions. I will show you also some preliminary data about that arise less frequently than uh, against inhibitors which act by other mechanisms. Uh, since many years, uh, our research group uh, have been interested in the development of uh, new anti virus inhibitors which act by disrupting protein-protein interactions. And the first target uh, on which uh, uh, our group focused is, is, is attention well, it was the ribonucleotide reductase of herpes simplex virus type 1. This was a project initiated by Dr. Alessandro Marcello. Uh, HSV1 RR is a tetramer composed by two large subunits R1 and two small subunits R2. And uh, in 1986, so two groups published <coughs> the reported the inhibition of uh, inhibition of this enzyme by a peptide, uh, Yagavindol. Mechanism of action studies demonstrated that this peptide acts by interfering with the R1, R2 interaction. Uh, and this was the first uh, uh, published example of inhibition of a viral enzyme to disruption of the subunit interaction. However, uh, it was then shown that when, the, when this peptide is added to infected cell cultures, it does not have any inhibitory effect on HSV1 replication, probably because it's too large to enter cells. <coughs> Thus, to investigate whether this peptide, when intracellularly delivered in a cellular context, could also inhibit virus replication, uh, it was fused to a uh, protein carrier, the B subunit of E. coli it labile enterotoxin. This is the not toxin portion of the toxin. Uh, is uh, sorry, <coughs> forms a pentameric structure, and it enters cells by binding to ubiquitous cellular receptors. And uh, we showed that this peptide, when fused to this protein carrier, could inhibit specifically the HSV1 replication. And the inhibition was due to a block of RR activity in infected cells. In a, a parallel, in a different approach, uh, by, taking, by starting from uh, a uh, shorter still active version of the Yagavindol peptide, a Canadian company, Biomega, employed a lot of efforts in terms of money, personal uh, time, in uh, designing and synthesizing uh, peptidomimetic inhibitors. And they found some compounds able to inhibit uh, RR activity not only in vitro but also in cell culture <coughs> at the low micromolar nanomolar uh, in the, uh, with IC50 in the low micromolar nanomolar range. However, uh, subsequent studies uh, uh, show that RR is not essential in all <coughs> cell culture conditions and above all in not, uh, in not all in vivo models. And therefore, it turned out that this uh, target is not, this uh, enzyme is not a good target. 
Thus, uh, anyway, uh, this study provided the first proof of principle of the feasibility of intracellular inhibition of a, a virus protein protein interaction. Therefore, we decided to continue this line of research uh, by focusing on more essential targets. For example, the proteins composing the HSV DNA replication complex. In fact, uh, several interactions between these proteins have been already demonstrated. And the best characterized of this interaction is the interaction between the two subunits of HSV1 DNA polymerase, uh, which is composed by a large catalytic subunit called UL30 and a smaller protein, UL42, which acts as a processivity factor. And uh, the molecular details of this interaction have been characterized, uh, for example, with this crystal structure, and uh, which revealed that UL30 bounds UL42 through its uh, C-terminal region. Um, we and other groups have uh, identified uh, some peptides corresponding to the very C-terminus of UL30 able to inhibit in vitro the viral enzyme. Thus, in a similar approach, uh, we again fused one of these peptides to uh, the B subunit of E. coli intelabile enterotoxin. And uh, we observed that this fusion protein could specifically inhibit HSV1 replication, but not, that, uh, but not the replication of another DNA virus. And uh, again, the inhibition of virus replication was due to a block of uh, viral DNA synthesis. Thus, uh, these studies demonstrated that uh, the disruption, uh, the inhibition of a viral replication to disruption of the DNA polymerase subunit interaction is a feasible strategy. But at this point, uh, the question was, uh, can this, such an interaction be inhibited also by a small molecule? The answer is yes. Uh, because mutational studies uh, show, have, the, have uh, revealed that uh, single residues of UL42 and of UL30 are crucial for this interaction. And uh, this is also confirmed by the crystal structure which I showed you a few slides ago, um, suggesting that uh, also a small molecule could uh, inhibit this interaction. And uh, the Donald Cohen uh, uh, group at Harvard performed an anthroposcope screening uh, to search for small molecules able to inhibit uh, the UL30 UL42 interaction in vitro, and they identified uh, some compounds. These are the structure of the nine its, and uh, one of these its, BP5, one of these compounds, BP5, could also inhibit <coughs> virus replication. Uh, in culture, in cell cultures. Uh, we uh, took a similar approach, undertook a similar approach against another, uh, uh, the DNA polymerase of another herpes virus, human cytomegalovirus. Human cytomegalovirus is an important pathogen, uh, human important pathogen, because uh, even though uh, viral infection are usually asymptomatic uh, in healthy individuals, it can cause, uh, it is responsible for uh, severe, even fatal diseases in immunocompromised uh, subjects, for example, transplant recipients and uh, HIV-1 infected patients. In addition, it is a major cause, sorry, a major cause of congenital defects in newborns. Uh, currently, there are only a few drugs which are approved for the treatment of HCMV infections but all these drugs suffer from uh, uh, several drawbacks. Thus, uh, there is still a strong need for new anti-CMV compounds, possibly acting by other mechanisms. The uh, HCMV DNA polymerase is again an heterodimer composed by a catalytic subunit, in this case called, called UL54, and an accessory protein called UL44, which acts as a processivity factor. Um, several uh, studies demonstrated that both UL54 and UL44 and also their interaction are essential for virus replication, suggesting that also in this case, uh, this interaction could be a good target for antiviral strategies. 
uh, in collaboration with the doctor Howard Marsden of the Institute of Virology in Glasgow, we identified, we again demonstrated that this interaction occurs through the C-terminus of the catalytic subunit to L54, and we, we identified uh, some peptides, in particular a peptide corresponding to the last 22 residues of L54, able to inhibit not only the physical interaction between the, the two proteins in, a, in, a, in an ELISA, but also the uh, enzyme activity in DNA polymerase assays. Um, with the Donald's Cohen group at Harvard, we also solved the crystal structure of UL44. The structure revealed that UL44 has an overall fold which is very similar to that of the HSV1 homolog UL42 and also to human PCNA, a human possessivity factor. Um, However, despite this similarity, UL44 can form, with, we surprised and discovered that UL44 can form an homodimer in contrast to UL42, which is a monomer. And we also demonstrated that the formation of UL44 dimers are important, is important for its DNA binding activity. We also solved the co crystal structure of UL44 bound to the UL54 C-terminal peptide, which uh, is uh, here in green, uh, yellow, sorry. Uh, and thus, we could identify some residues important for this interaction. Um, these observations were then confirmed also by mutational studies, which uh, demonstrated that only a few residues of UL54 and of UL44 are crucial for the interaction suggesting that also this interaction could be an excellent target for developing inhibitors. Thus, uh, we decided to perform a nitro screening to search for inhibitors of this interaction. And uh, I, for, for this purpose, for doing nitro screening, I developed a fluorescent polarization-based assay. I do not enter into the details of this assay, but I just say that this assay is an assay which can quantitatively detect a protein-protein interaction, and usually is enough robust and specific for doing iTroproof screenings. Uh, by using this assay, I screened several small molecule libraries for a, almost, for a total of almost 50,000 compounds. And initially, I identified almost 200 hits. Uh, because the number of hits was still too large to be characterized in details, I then performed a secondary screening to exclude the compounds able also to inhibit the UL30 UL42 interaction. In fact, despite to, to the uh, strong similarity between the UL42 UL42 uh, four uh, structures, uh, the regions involved in the interaction with the catalytic subunit, with the respective catalytic subunit, are very different. So one expects that a compound specifically inhibiting the UL54, UL44 interaction, HCMV DNA polymerase, would not inhibit the HSV1 polymerase. And then, uh, by doing this secondary screening with a similar assay, I identified, I, fi I finally, did, uh, sorry, I finally identified 21 widths that uh, could inhibit specifically uh, the UL54, UL244 interaction in vitro. Uh, then I reordered these compounds and I characterized them in a number of biological assays, both in vitro and in cell culture. And I identified uh, some five compounds which are able to uh, not only to inhibit the UL54, UL44 interaction in vitro, but also HCV replication. And the most potent, uh, we patented this compound in collaboration with Harvard, and the most potent of these compounds uh, is uh, quite interesting because it possesses antiviral activity with the IC50 in the low micromolar range and as uh, possesses a good selectivity in this. So now we are now studying this compound in in vivo models. Um, thus, maybe this compound could represent a in the future starting point for new anti-CMV drugs. Uh, more recently, 
we started to be interested on uh, trying to find uh, new anti-influenza compounds uh, which act by disrupting a viral protein-protein interaction. Um, as you probably know, uh, besides vaccines, which, uh, need, uh, which are reformulated yearly and uh, give only, so only limited protection, uh, currently there are only two classes of drug which have uh, been approved for anti-influenza uh, therapy. Uh, the M2 blockers and uh, the neuraminidase inhibitors. However, these drugs uh, again have uh, several drawbacks, in particular a very high propensity to uh, rise very quickly drug resistance. Um, the influenza virus RNA polymerase in this case is a, a trimer composed by P the PA, PB1 and PB2 subunits which are all uh, involved and essential for doing transcription and replication of viral RNA, and also their interaction is essential. We thought that the interaction, in particular the interaction between the PA and PB1 subunit could be an attractive target for a number of reasons. First of all, as I said, this interaction is important for, is essential for the enzyme activity. Uh, in addition, <coughs> Secondly, uh, the binding interface uh, uh, of the PB1, the PB1, PB, uh, PA, PB1 interface is highly conserved, uh, not only in human but also in non-human uh, strains, uh, suggesting that an inhibitor against this binding interface could have uh, a broad spectrum activity, being able to inhibit most, if not all, viral strain, virus strains. Um, finally, uh, in 2008, two groups published the crystal structure of a PA-PB1 complex, and both structures showed that a, for this interaction, a very few residues drive binding. What structure revealed that uh, the C-terminal part of PA forms a sort of hydrophobic groove, in which a short, very short alpha helix um, formed by about 10 residues alpha helix of PB1 can fit. And the molecular details of their interaction have been uh, analyzed and uh, very few residues appeared to be crucial for this interaction. And this was also confirmed by mutational studies showing that just mutagenizing one of such residues it's possible to significantly inhibit both the transcription and the replication of viral RNA. In this case, we decided to, to undertake a different approach and instead of using, uh, instead of doing a, a random eye screening, like in the case of CMV DNA polymerase, we uh, performed an in silico screening of uh, uh, approximately 3 million uh, small molecule structures in collaboration with Gabriele Cruciani of University of Perugia. And after a series of uh, screening steps, uh, we came out uh, with 32 virtual hits, which we acquired and tested in a number of uh, assays. Uh, first of all, we tested the ability of this compound to inhibit the physical interaction between the two uh, proteins in vitro both in ELI, in ELISA, and in GST pull-down S we developed. Then we tested the, the ability of the compound to interfere with this interaction also in a cellular context, and also to inhibit the um, RNA polymerase activity in uh, a mini replicon assays, an assay which mimics uh, virus, uh, the replication of viral genome, transcription and replication viral genome. Uh, we also tested the ability of this compound to inhibit the replication of both influenza A and influenza B viruses and, of, and to block uh, viral protein expression. Uh, we thus identified two compounds, uh, compound 1 and compound, uh, compound 5, these are the structures, which we patented, uh, patented in collaboration with the University of Padova. Um, and uh, uh, these compounds, uh, uh, in particular the most potent of them, compound one, 
uh, possesses antiviral activity with IC50s, AD50s in the uh, low macromolar range. Um, and this compound also possesses a broad spectrum activity, um, being able to inhibit the replication of uh, a panel of flu A and flu B viruses, including clinical isolates, the pandemic swine derived 2009 virus, and also a nozzle tamivir resistant strain. Uh, the activity of this compound is specific as it does not inhibit the replication of other RNA and DNA viruses, which is expected considering the, its mechanism of action. And uh, it is also not cytotoxic in a panel of cell lines. We also analyzed the uh, interaction between this compound and the PA protein target. Uh, this is a prediction, but this information, this is not a crystal structure, it is a prediction, but this information uh, allowed us uh, to perform SAR studies and uh, in collaboration with Oriana Tabarini of the of University of Perugia, we designed uh, and synthesized analogs of both compounds A1 and also of the other its. And uh, we already identified some analogs more potent than the parent compounds. This is just a recent publication, but uh, others are coming, will be published soon. Um, finally, uh, some very preliminary data seems to indicate that uh, these kind of inhibitors have a lower propensity to the rise drug resistance as compared to other anti-flu drugs, for example, Oseltamivir, but also Rimantadin, um, at least in cell culture. Finally, in last part of my talk, I would like to discuss a different screening approach. Um, this, uh, and rather on uh, focusing on the results, uh, which are very preliminary and still unpublished, I would like to focus the attention on uh, this approach, which uh, is based on the screening of small rational collection of bioactive compounds. Uh, one of such collection is the microsource spectrum collection, which is uh, a, small, a library quite small. It is composed by about 2,000 compounds and include all drugs currently approved for clinical therapy so they are already in clinical use, and also natural or biosynthetic compounds for which uh, biological, pharmacokinetic, pharmacodynamic, and toxicological profile also in vivo, for some of them, are already known. Um, of course, one of the major limit, uh, limits of this uh, library, it is uh, the very small number of test compounds, but uh, if one can find a compound or a few compound uh, which possess uh, an activity different from what, uh, what is known, and this activity is, can be still patented, uh, the compounds, the active compounds can, enter, can possibly enter very quickly clinical studies. We are currently employing this, uh, uh, the spectrum collection in two different projects. One is uh, aimed at identifying new compounds with antimetastatic potential in a, sorry, <laughs> in a model of uh, uh, breast cancer cells. And the other project is uh, focused on finding uh, inhibitors uh, of HCMV, which <coughs> acts at the very early phases of uh, virus replication. Um, the, the, for, the, uh, for the first project, uh, which we are developing in collaboration with Stefano Piccolo at the University of Padova, um, the, we started from data published uh, by his group uh, in Cell in, 90, uh, nine, in 2009, sorry, um, where they reported the discovery of a new uh, cellular pathway uh, responsible for migration, invasion, and finally metastasis in a model of breast cancer cells. 
And just to make short a very long story, in this cellular pathway, SHARP-1 was identified as a major player in being able to suppress uh, metastasis. Um, thus, we thought that SHARP-1 could be a suitable target for anti-metastatic strategies, and we decided to develop a cell-based assay for screening the spectrum collection to search compounds able to upregulate the expression of SHARP-1 and thus potentially endowed with anti-metastatic uh, activities. Uh, at the moment, we have screened uh, almost uh, approximately one third of the library, and we have already identified some, a series of compounds able to upregulate SHARP-1 expression. In particular, three of them are particularly active, and uh, I can't show you how compound they are which compound they are. Um, but one of these, we have already partially characterized, started the characterization of one of these compounds, <coughs> and uh, we found that uh, uh, its uh, uh, ability to induce the expression of SHARP-1 is dose-dependent, and also it uh, has the ability to uh, block, at, the, at least partially, cell migration in a model of breast cancer cells, not only migration, but mainly cell proliferation. And also, this, this was also confirmed, has been also confirmed by um, this assay uh, showing a block by, by these compounds of the clonogenic uh, potential of these cells. Um, so, in the future, we plan to finish the screening of this library. Uh, and to characterize better, both in cell culture, in other uh, models, uh, but also in vivo, uh, the active compounds. Uh, the second project is aimed to identify, uh, as I said, the compounds which inhibits the HSV replication at the very early stages of uh, uh, virus replication. And uh, as I said, there is a strong need of new anti cmv drugs. And uh, on this line, uh, drugs which inhibit uh, not just the lytic viral replication, but also um, reactivation from latency and all the immunopathogenic effects um, due to expression of the viral proteins could be particularly useful, and uh, early acting inhibitors could have these uh, advantages. For this uh, mm, project, uh, we used, uh, a, again, a cell-based assay, of course, a completely different assay, which had been already uh, developed by Giorgio Cribaudo of the University of Turin, and we confirmed the, the ability of this assay to uh, detect uh, inhibitors of, uh, for example, the immediately two proteins by um, characterizing the activity of a quinolone, which we recently discovered, to act by the, this mechanism. And in this case, we already com completed the screening of the entire spectrum collection, and we initially identified 83 compounds able to inhibit uh, the EGFP expression, which is the readout of this uh, assay, uh, by 50%. Um, then we made a secondary screening to confirm the activity of these compounds, but mainly to exclude cytotoxic compounds. And uh, at the moment, we identified, so and as we identified 32 active compounds, which we then characterize in other assay aimed to test the antiviral activity against uh, in cell culture uh, by plaque reduction assay and the cytotoxicity. And we found some compounds um, with IC antiviral activity uh, with IC50 values uh, below 10 micromolar or much lower, and with a selectivity index of at least 50 or higher. These are the compounds. And uh, we uh, now reordered some of them, and uh, by retesting them in those response uh, uh, experiments, we found that some of these compounds have uh, um, 
a good antiviral activity and also a good selectivity index. In the future, we will uh, um, try to clar and clarify the mechanism of action of these uh, compounds, for example, by time of addition, time of removal experiments, and so on. Uh, to character characterize the step of the viral replication in which they act, and we will also evaluate uh, the activity in combination with the other, uh, with the approved anti-CMD drugs, for example, ganciclovir, and we will also evaluate in uh, uh, this compound in a model of congenital infection. Uh, to conclude, uh, in screening projects, it's very difficult uh, to compete uh, with big pharma, uh, with uh, the larger resources uh, of, in terms of money, people, equipment, uh, with big pharma. But we believe that uh, uh, small academic groups uh, like ours still can uh, find some uh, ways to complement uh, uh, this uh, uh, the screening appro uh, approach and uh, have some success. Finally, I would like to acknowledge people who in the past uh, were in the past involved in this project, for example, main, above all, Alessandro Marcello, and the people who are uh, still working with me, uh, Giorgio Palù, uh, Elisa Sinigalia, Beatrice Mercorelli, Giulia Mulatore, Silvana Pagni, and many others and uh, our many collaborators, here there are some of them, but uh, I cited others. And finally, thank you for your attention. <laughs>